Hello, today we're, <coughs> today we're presenting King Midas and the Golden Touch. And the characters are nar uh, Narrator 2, presented by uh, uh, Hamad, and uh, King Midas, presented by Muhammad, Chuck, uh, Chief Gardner, presented by Marwan, Selenius, presented by Safan, Narrator 1, presented by Rashid, and Denisius, presented by Mik. For the first time anywhere in the world. These are the pictures and the world in this island. Bizarre, are you talking about me? I'm not Bizarre. I feel so good to have. I'm just a kid on the side of after I have peace. Actually, you're quite bizarre, Selenius, but you're also quite congenial to have around. In fact, I, I rather enjoy your company. I rather enjoy your company. You're one of my favorite creatures. I'd be ever so upset to lose you. King Midas is the king of this fabulous wealthy kingdom. Hello, Your Majesty. Hello, Chief Gardener. You're doing a great job with this garden. Just look at these roses. You are truly a lucky man to have such a wonderful garden. Your high, high, yes. not to mention a loving wife. <laughs> Yes, there is all that, right, Doctor. Yes, there is all that, Chief Gardener, but still, what? There is always a, there is always a fight with King Midas. Yes, King Midas is a truly perfect little man, but he never feels to fight something with all the beast. Indeed, King Midas is the skinniest, discomfort. He's also quite These roses are adorable, Chief Gardener. But how I wish this mantle looked even better. Goodness me, what's this? King Midas is looking at a pair of legs sticking out from under a rose bush. And what strange legs? They are, they've got hooves in, instead of feet. I do believe it's a there, your majesty. Oh yes, it's Selenius. His mask is Diomedes. So come out this instant, Selenius. You are trespassing in my rose garden. Trespassing? We sent us by trespass. So I don't think we can. Well, you're here without permission, Selenius. I'm sure of that. Even the gods made Leon, Leon, Dinosaurs would agree that what they're doing is just passing. Oh, kind sir, and your majesty, he took him and lost him, and sus, and so then they ran from him, and I'm afraid I lost him. I just sat down in this corner for a little bit, but so far I see. Your majesty, I ha I recommend the recent, recent word about this to the diagnosis at once. I'm truly not to do that, kind sir. Dionysus is a wonderful master, but he is not a good person. He will be very angry. He is so lucky to have you. He is here to be not doing anything. He will let you come out with you. If you will get a chance to finish this, I will give you a reminder to be some of these things. Your Highness, Your Highness, I strongly recommend it. Actually, my life is a bit on the dull side just at the moment. I could do with some entertainment. So Selenius stays at the palace, deleting the king and his family from wonderful accounts of his adventures. After a week, King Midas takes the scepter, Selenius back to the court, and the songs dances. Thank you for returning Selenius, King Midas. Despite his many faults, I am very pleased to have him back, all safe and sound.
as a token of my gratitude, I would like to offer you any gift you care uh, to me. I know you are a, a man of great wealth and good fortune, but if there's something you should wish for, as you see, I am indeed very fortunate. Not, not, nonetheless, there are one or two things I still desire. Hmm, let's see. Ah, I have it. I wish I had the power to turn whatever I touched into gold. Are you sure about this thing, Moises? <coughs> have you thought this was a proof? Do you really need that much gold? After all, everything you touch is an awful lot of gold. I'm absolutely sure, Dionysus. Thank you for offering me anything. Turning whatever I touch into gold is definitely what I want. Well, if you're absolutely sure, then I grant your wish. In my wish, wish is granted to this gentleman to this family. Thank you again, King Midas. I wish you uh, every happiness with your new gift. But you will be careful with it, won't you? Isn't this fantastic? Gold roses before long. I shall be the wealthiest and most powerful, powerful king in all of Lydia. I shall be known as the king with the golden touch. But your highness, the roses aren't this golden color anymore. Now they're made of gold and they lost their glorious fragrance. The rose garden has gone on still and like this, your majesty. Not be your own anymore. It's more of my when it becomes that cute. King Midas' garden has become a statue, but he doesn't care. He likes having a golden garden, and what's more, it's now worth a fortune. He calls for food and wine to celebrate. You are not thinking straight, King Midas. If everything you touch turns to gold, you won't be able to eat or drink. Look, King Midas, here comes your daughter. Remember what I said. Just be careful that you don't. But before King Midas can stop her, he, his beloved daughter rushed into his arms. And turns to gold. Oh no, what have I done? I, might, I must get rid of this terrible gift. Only Dionysus us to do that, Your Highness. Oh, Dionysus, please forgive a stupid, greedy man. What must I do to get my daughter back? It's most unusual for me to take back a, a gift, King Midas, but uh, that's not how it works. But if you're truly repentant... I am, I am, Dionysus. I truly regret being so greedy. I'll do anything you say. Very well. If you bathe in the river, Pactorius, uh, the gift will be undone. And that's basically what King Midas does. As he steps into the river, Pactorius, the sand beneath his feet, turns to gold, of course. But at that very instant, the power to turn things to gold leaves King Midas. King Midas is going to a handsome man. He is created by his beloved daughter and a garden of colorful fragrant golden. Having fun through content. Thank you for listening.